All right. Good eve, afternoon, whatever time of day this is. We're glad everybody's here. Yes. Carol, Michelle, Suzanne, Karen, Dan, Linda. Miss Caroline's here for the afternoon service. Miss Becky, Paul, Nancy, we got a crew. This is great. This is great. All right, we're going to sing a song. Um, I got to find my handy dandy clicker so I know what we're going to sing. We're going to sing There's Power in the Blood, all four verses. Okay. I'm excited about that because the truth of the matter is that's where the power comes from is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, one of my challenges with modern theology, if you will, for lack of a better term, is they've taken out the blood of Christ. We talk about, you, you know, we only teach and preach from the King James Bible. And the truth of the matter is, between, say, any two English translations of the Bible, there's only a 5% difference. But that 5% is about the deity and the blood of Jesus Christ, and they've taken it out. So uh, that's why we use the King James, because we've still got the blood of Christ. And that's why we can say there's power in the blood. So let's join together as we sing. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There's power, 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 wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There's power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much brighter than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There's power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Hey, man, that's good singing. All right, um, let's uh, open in prayer. Father, we love you. Thankful for you, thankful for the way you care for us. Pray that you bless the afternoon service. It's a privilege to be in your house. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, let's see. Um, praise it. Pray, I'm telling you what. You look at this side of the building, it's lo it looks good. We're going to be slapping some paint on that sometime in the near future. Probably not this week because it's supposed to rain most of the week. Um, but we're going to get a paint that matches the color of the building yeah. so that we go straight across and, it, and, and we have a, a pretty good color match on that. Um, and so we'll be doing that in the next couple of weeks. But i got to tell you, Brother Paul, Brother Gary, Brother Dan, I mean, uh, Brother Carl and Lloyd worked to get that thing ready um so i'm excited about i'm excited about that we're starting to use it well tonight i mean we gotta I, i've got a we've got some tools some big tools we got to move out of the garage so we're going to pile them on the uh, we're going to pile them on the trailer 
and get them up here. And today, tonight, when we have our four strapping young men here, we're going to have those four strapping young men carry those big things into the storage area. And then we'll get the tractor up there, too. Uh, so, uh, um, I'm yeah, that'll be good. That'll be real good. I'm good. I th it'll just be – and uh, then um, – then we get started in the morning. So, like I said, we've worked hard this week. I said to Paul this morning, I said, I hurt, my muscles hurt in places I didn't even know I had muscles. Okay, so, but it's been good. Um, <coughs> other praises. Yes. Right. And for that, I am thankful. Yeah, there you go. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. Um, John and Nettie, yeah. students getting settled into their routine. Yay. And then John has been hired as a substitute teacher for SAD Yay. 73, RSU 73. Yes. So that's been good. Ex they're excited about that. Um, yes. Oh yeah, I was down. I was downstairs when this happened. I came up. I came up for the end of it. Um, how did he fall, Paul? You were right there. And he bounced and rolled and bounced and rolled. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord that Gary didn't get hurt. So, and then his wife showed up just as we were. Oh, she was there when it happened? Okay. All right. So. Yeah. I'm praying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then uh, we got him some water and some first aid. He got all cleaned up. Um, if you haven't been down the basement, okay, if you knew what the basement looked like before, you wouldn't recognize it now, okay? Basement's all cleaned out. They took down the, the welding hood is gone. Um, that's been taken out. Um, so, huh? The claw's also missing. Yeah, uh-huh, the claw's also gone. Um, <laughs> We, uh, um, Howie's welding is going to build us an, e an emergency egress into the existing garage door so that you can still raise the door, and but when the door is down, you can open the doorknob and walk right through it, okay? So they're going to build that for us. We swat, we gave him, we gave Howie's welding the welding hood in exchange for building the egress door. So, and to be honest, he got the better of the deal financially. The egress door, the egress door is probably a couple of hundred dollars worth of work. The welding hood's about a $5,000 hood. So he definitely got the best, best end of that deal financially. But it worked for us. We needed to get rid of the hood. He needed the hood, and he was willing to trade services for that hood, and it's exactly what we needed. So he's going to be here one day this week, building the I I literally building the door for us. So uh, uh, that's that's a huge blessing. Um, all right, other praises. Yes, ma'am. Amazes me. Yep, and and God did. Somebody I heard Nancy shut the door. God, sh God, 
God clo literally closed off every possibility. Everything we tried, it was crazy. And, and like I said, there was one house came on the market Wednesday afternoon. That afternoon, I said, put an offer. I called the real estate agent, put an offer in, sight unseen. And by the time we got the offer on the table, it had already been sold. And I mean, within 24 hours, it was gone. But the life so. of the answer is life Yeah, yeah. So, and, and yeah, just with the construction crew coming up, they are, this is what they do professionally. This not this isn't a, this is not a ministry. This is a professional construction crew, and he was able to, for us, adjust his calendar to make this happen. If I had called, he told me point blank, if you'd called me tomorrow, I wouldn't have been able to do this. So, all right, Becky, what do you got? There you go. Amen, amen. That's good. All right. Um, Dan. And I didn't want it. <laughs> Yes. 
sing. And then when we were done, we went back there and Tony was just sitting there. <laughs> yep. And there were folks up saying, is this animal back here? Now, I don't know if that's a question or not. <laughs> Our building is going to be complete. Yeah. Yeah. Seven yeah. Years, set by our seventh anniversary, our building is complete. Wow. I'm not saying to, we're going to stop with no. the vision. Oh, I'm no. I'm saying be content with what the Lord has given us and let us grow from what we have. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for great things from God. Oh, yeah. I really am. I, I, they said he owns the cattle. Uh, I don't know how I heard that. <sighs> <laughs> so that that being said one of the things I like is where we are at as a church financially with us moving in and turning that half of the building into a parsonage with us moving in that puts the uh, us and the church in a financial position where I don't have to go to missions conferences to raise monthly support. Yeah. I still, now listen, I love the church planning conferences because I like giving our money away. Okay? God, get, listen, we're just a conduit. This church does not keep a dime. Okay? We either reinvest it in the building, we reinvest, or we reinvest it in outreach, or we give it to missions. The church doesn't keep a dime. Okay, so I like going to the church planting conferences because I like to give away the money. I and God always takes care of it. You can't out give God. I, I tell people that all the time. Uh, tithing's Old Testament. No. Yeah, no, tithing is New Testament. Jesus said we ought to tithe. Forget it. Okay, but I like being able to go to church planting conferences and say that guy's just getting started. He needs help. I'm going to help him. Okay. So I do like going to the church planning conferences, like the one Brother Paul and I are going to in a few months. And I like being to and I like being able to get a few weeks. Yeah. A few weeks. Okay. And and right. So now that I'm not going to raise money, I'm going to give money. We're going to get the church more involved in those things. Um, in March, there is a church planning conference in. Groton, Massachusetts. Anybody who wants to come, it's a Monday and Tuesday. Anybody who wants to come, come on down. We'll get hotel rooms. We'll stay there Monday night, and Tuesday we'll give away money for, for new churches. All right? And and uh, so uh, I'm just blessed that I can, for lack of a better term, be able to come off the A-list on Southwest. <laughs> Because I'm not tra I'm not running to the airport and getting a and uh, listen I didn't mind the travel but I got to tell you it wears and tears on you after a while, so I'm really glad that I don't have to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the four of us will go next September. <laughs> True. That's true. Yep. Right, right. I always went with the checkbook. Or I either that or I'd say I text Paul and I say you need to you need to put a check in the mail to this church for this amount of money. <laughs> Yeah. 
so. Yep, that's right. That's right. That's good. What else? Honey, you had your hand raised? Oh, just a couple of things. I just uh, just want to mention that the unions are just a super mandate here to get the um, jobs kept up. And the, and the hard work and the hard labor has to be unified and, and, and we talked about the Sunday school this morning too. It's just um, it's just what Jocelyn said that we will stick together. Right. There is absolutely Well, we're back in business, buddy. So going back to the travel, just so everybody knows, Paul and I have this conference in October, and I had already booked one missions conference in March, and I'm not going to back out on the preacher. But so that, but that's it. I'm not. I am not booking anything else. So just so everybody knows. No, I'm preaching here this year. I might be gone. Now listen, I might be, I might be gone on. A, you're right. I might be gone on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, I've had an offer to preach in Texas in January. I'm going to turn it down. So uh, I don't have to go. Um, so I'm pretty excited about staying home. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's sing another song. Let's stand. I ha get, shake off some of the cobwebs. Are you washed in the blood? Page three thirty. We'll stand. We'll shake off some cobwebs as we sing. Here we go. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for those mansions bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, let's uh, pray as our, our crew is leaving Connecticut. If they haven't already left, our crew is leaving Connecticut, so pray for them as they travel. Uh, pray for CJ. He doesn't know he's preaching Wednesday night, but he is. Uh, so uh, pray for CJ. i got to spring that on him. Um, pray, for, uh, pray for safety as we do all the construction this week. Okay. Um, pray for energy. i got to tell you, this is wearing me out. 
my head hits the pillow and I'm not staying awake. I got to tell you, I'm done. Boom, gone. Um, and Paul, Paul's pretty well in the same boat. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, there was something else too. Okay, here, pray for families by faith. We all know families that need the gospel. So for us to put down, come up with 10 families per family in our church, then to lift those names every day before the throne of grace, okay, and then to, uh, then to go ahead and act on our prayers and invite them out, then we, I fully expect God to yield results if we fervently pray. We don't pray. I'm telling you, folks, we don't pray. We're spinning our wheels. We're not going to get results, okay? We really need to commit this families by faith and the 10 families that we list. We need to commit those families to prayer, and we need to pray every day from now until the first day we ask them, and we want them to show up on, the, on October 16th. And the reason we want them to show up on a, I don't want them here on October 9th, to be honest, because October 9th we're taking up a missions commitment car, mission commitment cards, <laughs> and it's really hard when somebody walks into the church, into church as a visitor for the first day, and you're saying, "Give me your missions money," <laughs> okay? That's just a little bit awkward. We've been in that situation. Michelle and I have been in that situation, and I really don't wish that on anybody. So that's why we're actually starting. And if you think about it, families by faith is a, mi a, a commitment to missions to act. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, okay? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, unto the uttermost. It starts right outside our door. So families by faith is a commitment to start right outside our door. That's what that is. So it's really putting missions, not only putting our money where our mouth is in terms of missions, but it's putting action to our missions by getting the, by praying for these families and inviting them to church. So when I say it's all about missions and reaching people for Christ, it really is. That's what Families by Faith is all about. That's why I was very specific. If, if somebody's going to Victory Baptist in Winthrop, they're not an option for families by faith. If somebody's going Calvary Baptist down in Turner, they're not an option for families by faith. If somebody's going Gospel Light Baptist up in New Sharon, they're not an option for families by faith. But you know what? If they're going to Joe Schmo Presbyterian Church where they don't preach the Word of God, or Joe Methodist Church where all they preach is social issues, they are absolutely a candidate for families by faith. Okay, so uh, be much in prayer for the Families by Faith program and make your list and pray over your families. Okay, um, let's see what else. Huh? Yeah, if you bring your list in, we will make copies of your list so that we can, as a church, pray for those families as well. Yeah. Right, we're, it's, it, we're going to keep the prayers within the church family. Okay. That's what we need to do. We, we keep the prayers within the church family. Yeah, because you can put on different initials if you want. To. Right, yeah. right. So, um, let's see. Okay, Stephanie Stockwell, don't know who that is, very ill. Need positions filled at Green Central School. Ollie is having challenges with his neck and his arms. Uh, how do you, mm, never mind. Yeah. The <laughs> um, her, her, the, 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 uh, the Bruin family suffering from allergies and summer colds. Somebody named Alicia DeRoach dealing with breast cancer. Continue to pray for Pastor Michael. Um, heard from him earlier, a little while ago, and Pastor Michael said... Pastor Michael said, come on now, hurry up. Um, Anna and her heart attack. Yep, yep. 
Okay. All right. Sh mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Right. Pastor Michael said, Car thank you for your prayers. Cardiac doctors work four hours to open up an artery in the front of my heart. Feeling lots better today, but still in ICU. So continue to pray for Pastor Michael. And then we heard Benita, and we heard Anna, and we heard Shirley. Okay. Michaela can. Yep. She's not getting over her concussion. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Tioka dentist appointment. All right. Who? Gary? Yes, Gary Gary Braga, right? Braga. Right, yep, pray for Gary. Uh, he's he's back in the hospital, isn't he? Okay. All right, so just pray for Gary. We have tried multiple times to reach out to his family. We've caught Gary home, but Leanne just her, his wife just sees us and runs the other way. So we've been unable to get to Leanne. So, pray for pray specifically for Leanne. Pray specifically for Leanne, um, because we don't know that she's saved. So, all right. Any others? Very quickly. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for these. Father, we love you. We're thankful. So so thankful for you. And Lord, we think of uh, one of our own Anna. Lord, we pray that you'd help her. She's on her way to the hospital right now. She's had a heart attack. They're moving her to Portland. Lord, we pray that you'd stabilize her, that you'd give the doctors their wisdom. Lord, help her to realize there are things she needs to do for her health. And she hasn't been, by her own admission. She keeps saying, I got to do this, I got to do that. But it's keep saying and not doing. So, Lord, we pray you'd help her with that. Pray for Becky as she gets ready to move. Pray for uh, Tioka and her braces. Pray for Gary, Lord, Gary Braga, as he deals with uh, the cancer. Lord, we pray Leanne would talk to us. Gary needs to be saved, and we pray Leanne would talk to us. Uh, I'm sorry, Gary is saved. Leanne needs to be saved, Lord. You knew what I meant. Leanne needs to be saved, so Lord, I pray that she'd talk to us. Pray for Michaela, and Lord, she's still weeks later dealing with this concussion and now she's got vertigo we pray that you'd help her lord we pray that you'd give safety to those uh, those uh, those who are driving up to do the construction on this very building that you'd put a hedge of protection around the about around about them as they travel lord that you'd give them not only safe travel but unhindered travel no traffic jams and so on lord that they get here unhindered uh, lord we pray for the construction to be done this week that everything would get done, that everything would go smoothly, and that everything would go decently and, no and in order, and that everything would go safely. No one would get hurt. We're so thankful for everything that's been done to work on the building so far. Lord, we pray that you bless the rest of the week. Uh, Lord, pray for, uh, um, Lord, there's some unspokens with some family situations we have going on, Lord. Pray for them as well. Um, Pray, Lord, for families by faith. Really, for our church, this is what I would call a local missions outreach. A participatory local missions outreach. And, and here's the thing, Lord. We got this. Uh, you've given us this beautiful facility. It's going to be, for all intents and purposes, done. And, Lord, now we need you to fill the house. Uh, Lord, uh, we can fit a few more chairs in this auditorium. And then we can go to split services if we have to. Uh, Lord, uh, miraculously, Lord, we need you to help us pay off the mortgage. Once we pay off the mortgage, then we can, we can, build, we can build bigger and expand the auditorium and seat more people. And Lord, we want as many people as you we want as many people as you can fit into this little building to hear the word of God. 
So, Lord, we pray you'd help us. Lord, pray for the message to come. We're thankful for it. We love you so much. You're good to us, Lord. We know that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All righty. Let's stand. We're going to sing one more. What is it? To God be the glory. Let's stand as we sing. Didn't we do this this morning? Oh, okay. So we'll sing to God be the glory. It's page number 64 in our songbooks. Let's stand and stretch our legs one more time before the message. Here we go. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life our redemption to win, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender, who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he hath done great things he hath taught us great things he hath done and great our rejoicing through jesus the son but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder our transport when jesus we see praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord oh rejoice oh come to the father through jesus the son and give him the glory great things he hath done amen and amen huh yeah that's right all right, take your Bibles, remain standing, take your Bibles, turn to 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. And uh, we're going to read only we'll, we're going to read only two verses, so we will read bo both verses out loud together. It's 1 Kings chapter 8. We're going to read verses 57 and 58. 1 Kings chapter 8, we'll read verses uh, 57 and 58, and uh, I'm excited about this. I, of course, I'm excited about the Bible all the time. I'm excited about the Bible all the time. Every, every verse, ev just about every verse holds something, and I, 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 in my old age, I have just really, really taken to loving my time in the Bible. So, <laughs> all right, let's read out loud together. First Kings chapter eight, beginning in verse seven. The first word is the Lord. First two words are the Lord. So chapter eight, verses 57 and 58. Let's read out loud together. The Lord, our God, be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments which he commanded our fathers. Father, we love you. Bless your word today. We're thankful for it. Help us to glean from it uh, that we might leave here better prepared 
to walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, so I titled this, Putting Ourselves in the Best Position. Putting Ourselves in the Best Position. Every year in the summer months, in the spring and summer months, in the NFL, this team is trading that, this team is trading this, there's a draft out of the college, out of the college teams, and, and, and new players come on from college into the pros. And the object that every team has is to put themselves in the best position to win football games. Okay? Teams don't do all that preparation to lose. The more you win, the more they can raise their ticket prices. It's a monetary win for them. Well, the same thing is true or should be true in our lives, except our victory is not found in raising ticket prices. Our victory is found in the Lord. But nonetheless, we should desire in our hearts that we want to do that which puts us in the best position to claim the blessings and the victories that God wants us to have. One of the things I truly dislike about some of the modernism that has gone in our society today is they have sports leagues for kids where they don't keep score because they don't want some team of kids to feel like losers. Really, if there's no losers, there's no winners. If there's no winners and no losers, there's no motivation to get better. Okay? And the truth of the matter is, we need that motivation to get better. We need that motivation to get better in our in our, in our Bible reading, we need that motivation to get better in our prayer lives. We need that motion to get that motivation to get better in our church attendance. We need that motivation to get better in our service for the Lord. We need that motivation to uh, uh, have a more stable walk with the Lord. We need all that motivation because all of those things add up to what we would call a victorious Christian life. And I don't know about anybody else, but I don't want to lose, and I certainly don't want to lose when it comes to God. I certainly don't want to lose when it comes to God. I don't think it's right for us to look at life as losers, and I don't think it's right for us to look at our walk with God from a losing perspective. So therefore... If those things are true, then it means that I need to do what I can do in order to put myself in the best position to have a successful walk with the Lord. And it's interesting, again back to my football analogy, Last year, there was an investigation into the Miami Dolphins because the Miami Dolphins were accused of throwing games, that is to say intentionally losing, so that they could get a better position in this year's NFL draft. Okay? I don't know anybody who wants to throw the game when it comes to life. I don't know anybody who sits back and looks, looks forward at life and says, well, I want to be the biggest loser I can. You know, there, what was it? There was a, a, a reality TV show on for a while uh, that started with people who, you know, were my roommate out in California. When I moved out to California, I, got a, I ended up in a two-bedroom apartment with a with a man who when who started his weight loss journey at 500 pounds okay 
And uh, he could have been a contestant on this show, The Biggest Loser. I don't know anybody other than somebody who wants to lose weight that would be glad about losing because if they're losing weight, then they're winning, okay? Other than losing weight, I don't, you know, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to be in this thing called life and lose? And the answer is we shouldn't. Well, if we don't want to lose, that means we have to put ourselves in a position to win. Doesn't that make sense? If I don't want to lose, I want to I, I, I put myself in a position to win. So when it comes to walking with God, Dan, can you cut, cut me back a little bit? Thank you. No, don't cut me off. Just cut me back a little bit. When it comes to walking with God, I need to put myself in the best possible position. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 57 begins, The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. That's good. Uh, yeah, that's good. I don't need it. Yeah, we're good. We're good. The Lord, uh, the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. If we're going to put ourselves in the best position to win in our walk with God, then we need to take that, we need to look at that. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. So the, the, if we're going to have victories as a church, then we need to say the Lord our God be with us as a church. And, and the Lord our God be with us, Tioka. And the Lord our God be with us, Becky. And the Lord our God be with us, Dan and Linda. The Lord our God be with us. Okay, that means as a church to put ourselves in the best position, we need to say, we want God with us. Okay, We want God with us. And listen, I'm not asking to, for God to be on my side. I want to be on God's side. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, God, bless me, be on my side. Yeah, no, I just want to be on God's side. Whatever God's side is, that's the side I want to be on because I want to know that God is with us. God is with us as a church. And, and you know, years, back in the Civil War, uh, um, the Union Army, Abraham Lincoln basically stated in one way, shape, or form, that God is on our side. Well, I yo, no, I don't want I don't want God to be on my side. I want to be on God's side. Because if I'm on God's side, I know I'm on the winning side. I know I'm positioned right because I'm on God's side. And that means not only for us as a church, let us let the Lord of our Lord God of our fathers be with us. Well, wait. Let the Lord God of our fathers be with me individually. It's not only a corporate placement for our church to be with us, but I need for God to be with me. I can't rest on what somebody else did. I can't look. You know, we talked about all the blessings and, and everything coming together right in time for our seventh anniversary, which really is miraculous in its own right. Okay. But all of that is what God is doing. I don't want to get done. I don't want to get done with this week and say, it's all good. I can rest on my laurels. No, I don't want to do that. God's going to keep going forward. That means I need to keep going forward. I need to be with God. I need to be on God's side. New Life Baptist Church as a church needs to be on God's side. And we need to stay there that God would be with us. If Listen, if I'm going to position myself to be in the best position with God, then our church needs to be in its best position with God. And wait. For that to happen, not only do we have to make an individual decision, individual choice to walk with God, we need to make a corporate choice as a church to walk with God. And we mentioned this earlier, we need to make a corporate choice to walk together in unity. I appreciate, yeah, I can't, 
It's been an outpouring. Karen, Miss Karen said to me earlier, okay, what can I do to help this week? And we talked about it a little bit. Miss Suzanne has a trailer and some sheetrock for us, and I'm grateful for that. And we'll be getting that stuff this week. And, and um, uh, just the cooperation that we've had even this past week getting the storage area ready. Listen, without that storage area, I wouldn't be able to empty the basement. If I can't empty the basement, I can't build a youth center. It all works together. So uh, when, when we walk together, it, when we walk with God as individuals, and then we walk with God as a church, and then we walk with God as a church in unity, now we're really putting God in a position to bless us. Might I re just re any, any time you have any questions on that, Read Acts chapters 1 through 5. Over and over you see the church uh, where God says the church was of one mind and of one accord. And what happened to that church? God just kept pouring out the blessings and God just kept pouring out the blessings and God just kept pouring out the blessings and God just kept pouring out the blessings. So when we are, wait, we, so we walk individually. We want God with us individually. We want God with us as a church. And then we want God with us in unity as a church. And when we do that, when we look at the, and it's all about the people of God wanting God with us to do a work together for the cause of Christ. That's the people of God. And then, wait, wait, wait. That's the people of God. And what are we looking for? The presence of God. Let the Lord our God be with us as he was with our, with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us. If God's not here when we have our church services, I'm going home to take my Bapticostal nap. You understand what I'm saying? The only reason, I don't want to be here out of duty. I don't want to be here because I like everybody, and I do. Uh, uh, but I could be doing other things. Yeah, sleeping. That's a good other thing to do. But the fact of the matter is, this is where I get to meet with God. This is where I get to meet with God. And understand, for each of us, there are different meeting places with God. As we go to the Lord in prayer, where two or three are gathered together in his name, there is he in the midst of them. Okay? Wait, wait, wait. We go into our own individual prayer closets, and we have a spell with God. Okay? Um... We, uh, uh, um, we come together and sing praises unto God. And the Bible says that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. We get to be in the presence of God. And listen, it's great individually, but when we're here and we're together as a people of God, it's amazing corporately. It, it's incredible corporately for us to have the presence of God. Look, I want to preach every message as if Jesus was sitting right here. Right here in this chair. Every message I want, well, maybe over here. But nonetheless, <laughs> either or, I want to preach every message as if Jesus was sitting right here. Lord, are you pleased with what I'm saying? Lord, please, I, I, I want you. Listen, if I want to be approved of anybody, the person I want to be approved of is the Lord. And so if I'm going to be approved of the Lord in what we're doing as a church, then I need the Lord to be here right. when we're meeting as a church. Uh, it, there's just some things about the presence of God that are unmistakable in a church service. And I, 
There have been services here when I've just felt like I'm spitting in the wind. There have been. But the truth of the matter is that's not what I want to make. That's not what I want on, on, on a week to week basis. I want to meet with God. Wednesday nights is great. I, I love Wednesdays. OK, uh, because I get to sit down and I get to w with the men that are here, we get to break off. And with the, the ladies, my wife probably feels the same way. I don't know. I didn't talk to her, but I love sitting with the men and praying. Because I really feel like our men and the heart of our men who are here on Wednesday night, we really want to reach out to God. And there's something about praying that brings you into that throne room of grace and mercy. Where you're, you're, you are, you're casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you. And, and it's, it's just a time when we as men can get together and really feel the presence of God. We need that individually. We need that as a church. I want, I want the Lord sitting there every time. Every time I want the Lord sitting there. It's been amazing to know that we can be, as the people of God, we can be in the presence of God. And then, not only do we have the people of God, and we have the presence of God, but then we need to consider the pleasing of God. The pleasing of God. Verse 58, that he may incline our hearts unto him. Wait, that word inclined means to tilt over, to bend. That he may bend our hearts toward him. Lim, if Christ has any part of us, he begins with our hearts. Okay? He wants our hearts to be inclined toward him, directed toward him. He wants our heart to incline toward him that our hearts would have a heart for the things of God. Okay? Uh, why do we want to do faith promise missions? Because God, God's heart was. He had missions on his mind. Has missions on his mind. How do we know that? Because the Lord is not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. And wait. God made himself a missionary. You think about it. Jesus left the throne of grace, came to a land where nobody believe, truly believed, spent 33 and a half years on the mission field, gave his life on the mission field. Dr. David Livingston went to Africa and the London Missionary Society that sent him multiple times asked him to come back. You've served long enough. You've served him long enough. And he said, no, 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 no. I'm going to die on the mission field. I'm going to die here. And when he did, the, native, the natives of Africa, the, the London Missionary Society demanded his body back. The natives of Africa took his heart out of his body and buried his heart in Africa and sent his body back to the London Missionary Society. Okay. You think about the power of that example. They wanted the heart that David Livingston had for God. I want God to have my heart. And listen, if he gets my heart, he's going to get my mind. If he gets my heart and he gets my mind, he gets the rest of me too. Okay, uh, um, Romans chapter 12 and ber verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. In other words, you're putting the mission plate on the floor and you're saying, here I am, Lord, take me. You're giving yourself to God. So when the Bible says that we want to be, uh, we want to be pleasing 
to God, it's saying he wants our hearts. Because he knows we're going to follow our hearts. And if we're following our hearts and he has our hearts, guess where we're going? We're going to him. That our hearts, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways. I said this morning, I said, listen, Satan doesn't want, doesn't care if you worship him or follow him. Any way you go, is your, as long as you're willing to go your own way and not God's way. Okay? Bible says the exact opposite. To walk in all his ways. If he gets our hearts, we walk in his ways. We don't need to chase all over creation to find some great greener grass on the other side. We need to just walk in the ways of God. It begins as we incline our hearts. It begins, listen, when we as the people of God want the presence of God and have a determination to do, to walk with God to the pleasing of God. And then the last thing, not only do we see the people of God, the presence of God, the pleasing of God, but then we also see the plan of God. To keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. Okay, We have a plan. We see the plan in the Bible. It's there. The Bible hasn't changed. It's the word of God. It's God's plan for your life. It's God's plan for my life. It's God's instruction book for our lives. It is everything that we need to know about how to live a life for the pleasing of God. And listen, the best way we show that we please God is simply by obedience. Obedience. When... In 1 Samuel, God said to Saul, God sent the man of God, Samuel, down to see Saul. He said, Saul, the Amalekites did Israel a bad turn. So you are to go and you are to destroy the Amalekites. Lock, stock, and barrel. Not a living thing to be left among them. Not, not, not a person, not the cattle, not the sheep, not nothing left Wipe them off the face of the earth. That's what you're supposed to do. So Saul said, okay. And Saul went and attacked the Amalekites. Didn't kill the king, took the king captive. Didn't, didn't kill all the people. Didn't kill, didn't kill all the sheep and all the goats and all the livestock. He just didn't do it. And when the man of God, Samuel, came back, uh, um, Saul went up to him and said, Samuel, I'm so good to see you. Uh, I've been obedient unto the Lord. And Samuel said, oh, really? What's the bleeding of the sheep that I hear? Well, the people save the best of the livestock for sacrifice. And Samuel said, to obey is better than than sacrifice. God wants us to do what the Bible says. And God really doesn't make it all that complicated. I mean, if you read through, if you really read through the Bible and study the Bible, there's a few basic principles that we need to understand. I mean, you, you look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 22, abstain ye from all appearance of evil. If it even looks bad, don't do it. Okay, season your, salt, season your speech with salt that it may minister grace unto the hearers. If it even sounds bad, don't say it. Okay, If you can figure out how to do those two things, you're ahead of the game. You really are. Uh, if we watch what we do, that we abstain from all appearance of evil, and we watch what we say that we minister grace unto the hearer, 
we're actually in pretty good shape in terms of obeying God. And then there's where our heart is at in terms of obedience. And that's in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. Be kind one toward another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. That's the heart that we ought to have toward others. So you figure you got your actions, abstain ye from all appearance of evil. You got your, uh, 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 s s that your speech may administer grace unto the hearer. That's what you say what you do, what you say, and then you're giving your heart back when you're willing to be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for whose sake, Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. If we, listen, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. Okay? The second is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. On this, the, uh, Jesus said, on this hangs everything else. Okay? So if that's true, then by guarding your actions and guarding what you say and guarding the, guarding the spirit of your heart, you're positioning yourself to keep the statutes of the Lord. <clears throat> I, I had a lot of fun writing my doctoral thesis. 200 pages on practical applications for ministry today from the life of Jesus Christ. Two years to get it done. So when it comes to arguing theology, I can hold my own in a theological argument. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, It comes down to just doing what God says. All of the theology in the world doesn't hold a hill of beans to simple obedience to the scriptures. You can fuss about theology all you want, but if you're not doing what God says, the theology doesn't matter anyhow. Okay? We ought to want to follow the plan of God for our lives. You know, it amazes me. I have five children, all of whom have graduated from Bible college. And, and one of them, if, you'd, if, if you had told me, don't misunderstand, I love my daughter Amanda, but she had some educational disabilities, okay? If you'd told me she'd ever graduate from college when she, was, when she was 10, 11, 12 years old, I would have said, you're nuts. She doesn't have a chance. We thought we were going to be taking care of Amanda for the rest of her life. God had a different plan. Listen, wait. She's a deacon's wife at another church, okay? And, and she's got her own child and another one on the way, and she's doing great why? Because she got a hold of a simple fact. She just decided somewhere along the line she wanted to do right by God. I mean, to be honest, her success in life has nothing ha, has only somewhat to do with the way Michelle and I raised her, more Michelle than me, but, Michelle, but the way we, we raised her, it's got to do with the fact that somewhere on her somewhere along the way, she made she, she decided she wanted to follow the plan of God. And God blessed her for that. Amen. And that's, a mir that's really a miracle in our life, okay? Because God blessed her for that because she simply wanted to follow the plan of God. And, and listen, God's plan isn't always easy. My daughter, my, my, oldest, da my oldest daughter, Kristen, um, you know, you, you, uh, a lot, of, a lot of women go to college to get their MRS degree, okay? <laughs> Bible college to get their MRS degree, okay? My daughter, Kristen, graduated from International Bible College, and um, she, uh, uh, sh she left, and she had no prospects for a husband. And she went out to Grass Lake, Michigan, to be a church secretary at a church in Grass Lake, Michigan. And she had just resigned, her, resigned herself 
being single for the rest of her life and li just living for the Lord. And then God brought a young man by the name of Seth into her life. And where are they? Today, they're married and they've got six kids. Six, right? Is that right? They've got six kids. Okay. <laughs> and, and listen, uh, that was absolutely, positively God's plan for her life. And I'm excited for that. But she, she had to reach a point in her life where she decided she was just going to go with God's plan. Her plan didn't matter. She set her plan aside and, get, and decided to go on God's plan. And when she did that, God said, okay, now let's take care of business. Okay? And it's amazing what we can accomplish if we're just willing to obey God. If we're just willing to go with the plan of God. So when it comes to putting ourselves in the best position with the Lord, well, it comes from, uh, it comes from being with the people of God and being in unity together for the cause of Christ. It comes from desiring the presence of God and wanting God in our personal lives and God in our church services. It comes from the pleasing of God, wanting to have a heart to follow God. And it comes from the plan of God, a simple determination to do what God says. If we're really going to put ourselves in the best position with the Lord, then that's the things that we need to do. And it, it, again, I have never believed anything in the Bible is complicated. God did not write a book that we could not make head nor tail of. God wrote a book that we could use to simply learn about God, learn what God could do for us, and to learn what we could do for God, and to learn how we could be with God for eternity. And he didn't make it rocket science. He didn't put us in a position where nobody can figure it out. He gave us a book where we could learn from it and put ourselves in the best position that we can with God. A united people of God, a desirous presence of God, a determined pleasing of God, and a determined following the plan of God really when it comes down to it it's not hard to figure out it's just are we going to do it father we love you we're thankful for your grace thankful for the way you bless us thankful for the encouragement that we get from your word and lord we pray that as we go today you'd help us lord to incline our hearts toward you that you'd help us to go forward together as a church united, going in the direction that you want us to go. And going forward as a church united, desiring your presence. Going forward uh, united, desiring your presence, bending our hearts in your direction. And going forward united, we're desiring your presence, inclining our hearts toward you, determined to do what you say we should do we love you lord it's just it's the way we ought to go it's the way we need to go to put ourselves in the best position for you to bless our lives for you to bless our church in jesus name amen y'all are dismissed thank you very much for sticking around yep All right. I'm a lot stiff. There ain't no little about it.